Let's talk about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is the idea that a population is not evolving. So it is when allele frequencies are not changing. But there are five key assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. No mutations, no natural selection, a large population size, random mating, and no gene flow or no migration. Let's see what happens when these are violated. So if we do have mutations, then we're able to generate new alleles, which does change allele frequencies. Therefore, it's important to have no mutations. If we have natural selection, then a certain allele is selected for. So that allele is going to become more common in the population. A large population size is important because larger populations are less susceptible to sudden changes due to genetic drift. The smaller the population size, the more susceptible it is. Random mating is important because if there is non-random mating, then a certain genotype is selected for because people in the population are going to choose to mate with individuals of the same genotype. And finally, no migration is important because if we do have migration, then alleles are either introduced or removed, which changes allele frequencies. So the five key assumptions are no mutations, no natural selection, large population size, random mating, and no migration. There are also some key equations. The first is P plus Q is equal to one, and P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared is equal to one. The first equation is always true for a population that has two alleles at a certain locus. But the second equation is only true for a population that is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. But what do these letters even mean? Well, P indicates the dominant allele, and Q indicates the recessive allele. If you know the values of P and Q, then you can square P to get the homozygous dominant genotype frequency, 2PQ is the heterozygous genotype frequency, and Q squared is a homozygous recessive genotype frequency. So again, P squared is the homozygous dominant genotype. 2PQ would be for heterozygous genotype frequency. And Q squared is for the homozygous recessive genotype frequency. In this example, I used capital A for the P allele and lowercase a for Q allele. But another key idea to know is the reason that we do 2 times P times Q for heterozygotes is because there's actually two ways that you can get it. You can get an A from your mom and a little a from your dad, or you can get a little a from your mom and a big a from your dad. Therefore, we do 2 times P times Q. I've reiterated those combinations above. Now let's actually apply the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So this problem states that the frequency of homozygous recessive genotype in a population that is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is 0.09. We know that this is the homozygous recessive genotype. Remember, the recessive allele is represented by Q. So we are going to do Q squared because that is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. 
and we are going to set q squared equal to 0 0.09. This is now normal algebra, so we take the square root of both sides, and we find that q is equal to 0.3. But the question asked us for the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. Remember, we found the frequency of the recessive allele, but now we want the dominant genotype. And this is represented by p squared. So first let's find p, and then we can square that. Remember the equation p plus q is equal to 1. We already know the value of q, so we can just plug that in p is equal to 1 minus 0.3 and is therefore equal to 0.7. So in order to find p squared, we can just do 0 0.7 squared. And remember that p squared is the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. So since we know that p is equal to 0.7, p squared is going to equal to 0 0.7 times 0 0.7. So our final answer here is 0 0.49 or 49%. And that would be the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. Now let's take a look at in another example. A population of fish have 1,024 fish with the big F, big F genotype. 512 fish with the genotype big F little f and 64 with the little f little f genotype. Find the allele frequencies. Now remember that the question asks us to find the allele frequencies. So the best way to start is just count the alleles. And some questions to keep in mind are how many total alleles are there? And how many dominant alleles are there? And finally, how many recessive alleles are there? Now let's start with how many total alleles there are. I'm just going to rewrite the information that was given to us in the question. And let's calculate. So we know that 1024 times 2 plus 512 times two alleles, plus 64 times two, should give us the total number of alleles. So let's do that calculation. We find that the total alleles are 3,200. Now let's determine how many dominant alleles there are. The dominant allele is F, so the frequency of big F is equal to the number of big F alleles in the population divided by the total number of alleles in the population. We already know that the total number of alleles is equal to 3,200. So we can just substitute that in the denominator. Now let's figure out the number of big F alleles. We know that the number of homozygous dominant individuals is 1,024. So we can do 1,024 times two plus 512 individuals who had one big F allele. If we do the math, it looks like 1,024 times 2 for homozygous dominant individuals plus 512 for the heterozygous individuals that had one dominant allele. And this gives us that the frequency of the big F allele is equal to 0 0.8. So that is the frequency of P because P represents the dominant allele Let's now do the same for Q. We know that Q would be the frequency of the recessive allele, which is little f. 
and that is going to equal the number of little f alleles in the population divided by the total number of alleles. And again, we know that the total number of alleles is 3,200, so we're going to substitute that into the denominator. The number of little f alleles is going to be 512 from heterozygous individuals plus 64 times 2 from homozygous recessive individuals. So the math is 512 plus 64 times 2. And the frequency of little f allele is 0.2. We've now determined that the allele frequencies are p is equal to 0 0.8 and q is equal to 0 0.2. That's our answer. One way to check this is we know that p plus q should equal 1 for a population that has two alleles at a certain locus. Does 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 equal 1? Yes, it does. So this is a valid answer. Now one follow-up question could be, is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? And the way to determine if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is if the observed genotype frequencies are equal to the expected genotype frequencies. Now those sound like complicated words, but let's break this down. Observed genotype frequency and expected genotype frequency. So the expected genotype frequency can be calculated using P equals 0 0.8 and Q equals 0 0.2, which is what we calculated above. Now we know that p squared is equal to frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype two p q is going to be the frequency of the heterozygous genotype and q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype and this comes from that equation that we talked about earlier which was p squared plus two p q plus q squared equals 1. Now we know that p is equal to 0 0.8, so p squared would be 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, which is 0 0.64. We can do the same with 2pq. We know that p is equal to 0 0.8 and q is equal to 0 0.2, so 2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 gives us 0 0.32, which is the frequency of the heterozygous individuals. For Q squared, we use 0 0.2 and multiply it by 0 0.2 to get 0 0.04. So those are our expected genotype frequencies from the allele frequencies that we calculated above. Let's now find the observed genotype frequencies. For the observed genotype frequencies, we're going to look at the information that was given above in the problem. So we know there are 1,024 fish with the homozygous dominant genotype, 512 with the heterozygous, and 64 with the homozygous recessive genotype. So for this, p squared is the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. And that is going to equal the number of homozygous dominant individuals divided by the total number of individuals in the population. We are told that the number of homozygous dominant individuals is 1,024. So that will go in the numerator. The total number of individuals will just be 1,024 plus 512 plus 64. And if you do the math, that is equal to 0 0.64. Let's now do the same for the frequency of heterozygotes. That will equal the number of heterozygous individuals in the population 
divided by the total number of individuals. And we're told that the number of heterozygous individuals is 512 with the genotype big F, little f. The total number of individuals is going to be 1024 plus 512 plus 64. Same thing that we did in the calculations for the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals. This calculation tells us that the frequency of heterozygous individuals is 0 0.32. And now we're going to do the same thing for the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals. I ran out of space, so I'm doing it above. The frequency of homozygous recessive individuals is going to equal the number of recessive individuals divided by the total number of individuals. Now the number of recessive individuals is 64 because those were the individuals with the little f, little f genotype. So 64 goes in the numerator, and again, one th the total is going to be 1024 plus 512 plus 64. And when we add all of that up and do the math, we find that the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals is 0 0.04. Now remember, we said that a population is going to be in equilibrium if the observed genotype frequencies equal the ex expected genotype frequencies. We found that for the expected frequencies, p squared equals 0 0.64, 2pq equals 0 0.32, and q squared equals 0 0.04. For the observed, we found the same values. So is the population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? Yes. Yes, it is. I hope this video helped.